Hey, this is Pastor Lot. Thanks for joining me today. We are in Acts chapter 27. Paul has just told the men in this ship, the ship that looks like it's going to be doomed and they're going to lose everything. He just told them, the Lord has spoken to me. He told me, don't be afraid, Paul. <coughs> All the men are going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. I'm going to take care of you. You're going to lose. They're going to lose a ship. But the men are going to be okay. We're going to pick this up in verse 27. Now, when the 14th night had come, as we were driven up and down in the Adriatic Sea, about midnight, the sailors sensed that they were drawing near some land. And they took soundings and found it to be 20 fathoms. And when they had gone a little far farther, they took soundings again and found it to be 15 fathoms. Then fearing lest we should run aground on the rocks, they dropped four anchors from the stern and prayed for day to come. You know, right there, we could stop right there and we could spend weeks probably talking about praying for the day to come. What it feels like to feel like you are completely at the mercy of everything around you, of every wave. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know. You just throw your anchors out and pray for the day to come. My friend, there is security in walking with the Lord. There is security in knowing that He will take care of you and trusting in His Word. Verse 30, and as the sailors were seeking to escape from the ship, when they had let down the skiff into the sea under pretense of putting out anchors from the, from the prow, Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, unless these men stay in the ship, you cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut away the rope to the skiff and let it fall off. Now here we go, things have changed. <coughs> they didn't listen to Paul to begin with. But after seeing certain events take place, after being without hope and Paul giving them hope, saying, listen, the Lord told me that not a life will be lost if you stick with me. Then when they try to escape the ship and get away, they listen to Paul finally this time. You know, sometimes people, they just won't listen to you. You're, you're only a Christian. You have an imaginary friend named God, and uh, you're stupid. But my friend, hear me, there will come a time when they have run out of hope, run out of options, and they will look for someone who has hope in the unseen. They will look for someone who has hope in things that they can't see with their eyes and they don't know with their mind. You know, it's silly for us to think that the only thing that exists is what we can see, feel, and touch. It's silly for us to believe that there are no other dimensions, no other realms, and that we are the only true existence. But you know what? I know that every single one of us, when things get tough and times get really uh, hard to bear, that there's something in us that calls out. It's only in our pride that we ignore God. But it's in our realization that we call out to God when we realize that it's, it's over for us. <clears throat> Verse 33. And as the day was about to dawn, Paul implored them all to take food, saying, Today's the fourteenth day you've waited and continued without food and have eaten nothing. Therefore I urge you to take nourishment, for this is your survival, since not a hair will fall from the head of any of you. This is what he's saying, my friend. He says, listen, it's been fourteen days, you've been fasting, eat some food, you're going to need it, we've got a long swim, but don't worry, you'll make it. Don't worry, you'll make it. Don't worry, you'll make it. Verse 35. 
When he had said these things, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. When he had broken it, he began to eat. Then they were all encouraged and also took food themselves. And in all, we were 276 persons on the ship. So when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship, threw out the wheat into the sea. <coughs> I'm going to stop here, even though we only have a few more verses. I'm going to jump back to this one verse. He, gave he, he took bread, gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. I want to encourage you to not be so ashamed or so concerned or so afraid that you can't give thanks for what God has given you in front of people. So what if they don't like it? So what if they don't like it? You're honoring the God, the Creator who gave you life. Do it in front of them. Mock if they want to. Laugh if they will. But you honor God and give Him thanks. And don't be ashamed in front of people. Father, today I pray, Lord, that, and there are several things that we heard in this, but I pray, Lord, that you help us to be people who are faithful, people who, uh, Lord, consistently place our trust and our faith in you, our hope in you, and believe you for the outcome, Lord, that you will save us, deliver us, and bring us through. We trust you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining me today. Bye-bye.